Trams were once ubiquitous across the UK, offering affordable travel to the working class. But the rise of the car after the Second World War meant that by the end of the 1960s, trams were more likely to be found in museums than on the streets. Trams disappearing from the streets, it was very much to do with the next stage of um, transport evolving. In the 50s and 60s, motorbuses, cars, they were evolving, developing, they were a lot more on the streets than they had been previously. And what you tended to find was that increase in traffic on the streets. It got complicated having trams on there as well because they were limited to having to move on the tracks. They couldn't move in and out of all the other traffic. So there was kind of a bit of backlash that they were holding things up really. The North of England open air music Trams fortunes began to revive in the 1970s Inspired by continental Europe, authorities started to see them as a solution to traffic jams, cheaper than trains and having the advantage of being able to run through city centres. During the 1980s, Manchester, Newcastle and London all installed trams, also known as light rail. Trams are now a vital part of many of our major towns and cities. Without them, huge regeneration projects would never have happened. They've proved they have a place in our modern cities and development is still unfolding. Trams do have their critics, however, and nowhere more so than here in Edinburgh, where the controversial construction of a line linking the airport and city centre has been dogged by disappointment and delay. Mishandling of the original contract and underestimation of the civil works challenges involved led to spiralling cost and years of construction-related traffic disruption. Many in Edinburgh complain bitterly about a line costing nearly twice as much as promised, but only half as long as planned. John Carson, a retired civil engineer and long-standing tram critic, says Edinburgh never needed the line and that its huge cost and over-optimistic expectations for passenger numbers mean it will never pay its way. It's a nightmare, um, and it's a nightmare that hasn't stopped yet. I think the problems are only starting. The trams won't contribute to Edinburgh's economy. There'll be a continuous drain on the city of Edinburgh for the next 30 years. But Frank Ross, convener of the Edinburgh Council's Economy Committee, says that for all their troubles, the trams are already helping attract investment and that he hopes the line will be extended. We've gone through a difficult time in Edinburgh and, and we do need to let the people settle in a little bit and see um, that the system works and is as good. It's already the attitude in Edinburgh has changed significantly uh, towards the tram. Economically, definitely, there, there, there is a case for expansion of the system. For Edinburgh residents worried about the future, Nottingham offers some reassurance. The English city is so enthusiastic about its network, it is adding two more lines. The council says that will ease traffic, add 300 million to the local economy and help create up to 8,000 long-term jobs. The tram has brought tremendous benefits to our city. We've seen huge levels of investment along line one. It's brought jobs. Uh, along line one in some of the industries that, and uh, retail that has grown up along there and of course uh, jobs currently both in terms of constructing lines two and three at the tram and also jobs in terms of firms that are moving onto sites where lines two and three of the tram will run. So uh, we've seen the economic growth that we hoped for, we've seen housing growth and of course we've seen increases in public transport use as well. So the city's benefited in a number of ways. Nottingham helped meet the 570 million extension bill by introducing a workplace parking levy on employers who had more than 10 parking spaces. Behind me, the tram line is being extended through Nottingham's NG2 business park. The park itself was designed and built around the tram's route. Businesses have brought their national and international headquarters here, encouraged by the certainty that a fixed piece of transport infrastructure brings. Manchester. Birmingham and Sheffield are now adding tram lines, but with limited opportunity for whole new systems in the UK, operators are looking to expand overseas, hoping that Britain's tram revival will put them on track for international success. Jane Wilde, Financial Times, Nottingham.